this is the new this is my newest edition I just finished this yesterday um, this is the cheat code XML file for I'm actually just gonna mute those channels um, cheat code XML file from mightymo.net and this has uh, just a ton of games and all the related cheat codes now the cool thing about this is which I so glad that I finally implemented because I was so annoyed with having to manually go and look through and find codes online and manually entering them in what I've done is so this is just showing you all the codes you can go look at look up any game like for example you just type in <coughs> Super Mario and you can see all of the codes related to that <coughs> and it gives you a description on what they are. Now, the cool thing is not that you can see all those. The cool thing is, and ignore that it says UART MUX here, it's not using the UART MUX. You actually have to click this button. I'm gonna change this whole layout. This whole layout is really old and related to the UART and is not useful now. But, um, so here's the cool thing. So. First of all, for the cheat code interface, I used to only have Game Genie codes supported, and you had to manually enter them in, um, and you had to know what they were, you know, in order to enter them in. You had to go look them up manually. Um, but in addition to the Game Genie codes, I've now added support for address value pairs, which are just, you know, a hex address with the associated byte value that you want to replace and an optional compare value saying that you only want to replace the data at this address if a specific value is already present. So, so here's the cool thing. So every time you load a ROM, it calculates the SHA-256 value and of the game file, and I assume that it's using this one. And it will go in and look in the database, compare the ROM SHA to, the, it will look for the SHA address, and it's gonna find, hopefully, or maybe not, an entry in the XML database file, and it's gonna go ahead and populate these Q combo boxes, or drop down boxes, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with QT, with all the cheat codes that are available, and it does that on each of the ROMs. Now, the address value pairs look a bit different. So it's saying, these are saying if the hex address is, you know, 05F9, then substitute, have an unconditional replacement or unconditional substitution for the value 02. Uh, and the cool thing is, is I have tooltips assigned here. So it's telling you invincibility, infinite health, infinite lives, which you can see are right here invincibility, infinite health, infinite lives. Um, and the same thing goes up here. I've got the tool, the tool tip set up here. And also, you can just, if you, you can select one like this, um, and it will update the description to tell you what that code is doing. And it also tells you if it's like a multi, so hitting anywhere, for example, if we open that up. See, this actually requires multiple codes in order to work properly. And, um, it will tell you, you know, this is only code four or five. So you're actually going to have to make sure that you have, you know, all five of these codes in here and checked in order for it to work. Now, these codes don't take effect until you check them. You check the individual codes, you check the master enable, and you click apply. And um, another, another neat thing is, is this will... Um, it'll autocomplete for you. So, for example, if you say A O O, so which is I'm trying to get this one, but there's also another one apparently, oh, which is this one right down here. And so you, it'll complete it for you. You can, you can just click Tab, and it'll update the description. Now, what it's doing now the boxes are red if the syntax is invalid, and it also doesn't let you check the box if the syntax is invalid. Now I can enter another Game Genie code that I know is valid, but is not a particular, a specific code for this game. It's actually the code for Infinite Lives for Super Mario Brothers. Now that is a valid code, 
but it doesn't update the description because there is no description available for that code for this particular game. So, um, uh, but since it is valid, you can manually enter any code you want and still check the box, but it may or may not do anything. So that's good if you want to create your own game genie codes or your own address value pairs. So like for these, for example, um, the syntax is, you know, the kind of similar to the ternary syntax of like C, but for example, we can have 04CC. It'll light up green when the syntax is valid. If you get that address and substitute 08, or you can say, well, I only want to substitute 08 if the address is 04CC and the value that was originally there or is being read is 24 and that is also valid. So that's the syntax for address value pairs. That's pretty common. Nestopia supports that and I'm sure a lot of other emulators do as well. But it's new for my emulator because I had only supported Game Genie codes before. Um, now also I believe that my um, my HQXC, so that's a bug in my in my uh, emulator right there with all that junk on the bottom. But um, I currently have my HQ2X pixel scaler enabled right now as well, I believe. Um, yeah, I do. So if I can actually, I can actually turn it off. You might be able to see the difference, maybe not, because the screen is kind of small and it's just a picture in picture. But it's on, off, on. Off. Um, so let's see what else have I done um, yeah the game genie thing is the biggest uh, thing for me um, and actually I can show you that this works um, let me just do Super Mario because that's um, the easiest and I'm actually viewing this on a really small webcam screen in Camtasia right now so um, so so it's loaded up Mario now you see okay the, it's updated the game genie interface and it says oh you have 40 47 game genie codes available and actually we can just go to that real quick yeah 47 game genie codes available and six address value pairs um, now this is it's six cheats not six actual address value pairs so because some of these cheats are multi-code so it doesn't count you know the multi-code it just counts multi-code cheats as one so that's why it's saying there's six available but there's actually more than six listed here because some of these have two they require two to enable but there's six actual six separate cheats so so let's go ahead and try some of these um, it doesn't matter what box you put it in um, I guess we'll do invincibility starman effect. That sounds cool. And always get fireworks. After you fall down a hole, you drop in from above. Sweet. Let's do that. Um, and let's see what else. Pick this one. Infinite lives. Not sure how much that matters if you can't even die from falling in a hole and you have starman effect. Uh, Goombas don't walk on ledges. Internal mm, enemies. Uh, whatever. We'll just pick these two. Have to enable the master interface. And we'll go ahead and apply that. And you, I'm not sure if it picked that up, but it popped up a, a really quick um, progress dialog it said, that said that it was uploading the cheat codes. So, and that's just my phone going off shut up thank you so I'm gonna go ahead and play so the cheat codes are uploaded and the checked ones are enabled so you'll see Mario's already flashing and so that's a good sign <laughs> so let's go ahead I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this I guess it doesn't matter it's Starman but turn the volume down Hopefully this is mixing my voice and the system sound right. Playing on this small screen sucks. So obviously Starman is working. 
Okay, so obviously the Goombas just keep falling, so let's see. Yep. Alright. And now I can turn off the codes at any time. So let's turn off when you drop down a hole and die. And whoop. Aw, oh, I died. I died it. So I have two lives. Now let's go ahead and enable infinite lives, which actually, here, here's an example. I already know infinite lives is memorized. Isn't that sad? It is SXIOPO, so I'm just going to tab auto complete that. And I'm going to check this box. And if I just apply that and go kill myself. Whoops. Oh, I can't kill myself. I have to fall down a hole. Let me turn off star man effect. Now the star man effect, I turn it off, but it'll keep going until, like, normally when you get a star, it lasts for a few seconds, so. Alright, so now we can die. So, still have two lives left. Alright, what else? What have I not shown you? I think my ROM information pane is pretty much the same. I added some more emulator status. Um, let me let me mute this. I added some more emulator status info um, here that tells you the which mirroring is enabled now. Some of these might not make sense for the particular ROM that you're using, especially if like the mirroring is mapper controlled. I don't have all that stuff set up yet, but this CRC is actually the CRC that was computed inside the FPGA. This is the CRC of the ROM. Okay. And this is the CRC that was calculated after the ROM, or as the ROM was being uploaded to the Baroness. And the reason I do that is, one, so I can be completely certain that the um, that the ROM was uploaded correctly. Again, I don't want to be fighting bugs because a ROM has is corrupt in the first place um, and wasn't uploaded to the SRAM. Uh, correctly. Um, so one is for verification purposes and debugging purposes and another one is uh, so that well, I forgot what I was gonna say um, but anyways there's another reason that I have it on there. Um, oh the other reason is because for certain mappers you only want to enable certain features of certain mappers if it's a particular ROM, a very specific ROM, like for example, um, Gauntlet or Rad Racer 2, uh, Rad Racer or Rad Racer 2, um, they use four screen mirroring, which are on, I think that's MMC3, and you only want to enable four screen mirroring if it's those particular games. Otherwise, you want four screen mirroring to be disabled. So, um, I, I think I added this. I think this is new. It tells you the last um, ROM that was uploaded. Um, I think this already existed. This just I can download images from uh, the NASCAR database website and show you, you know, the various, you know, car printed circuit board box images if they're available. Uh, I already showed that, so I'm not going to show that again. I showed that in my last video. Um, Oh, what else? I've got a list here. So I added support for the D2115 uh, Cyclone 4 board, which had asynchronous SRAM. So I now support uh, three types of SRAM, uh, which are uh, asynchronous and then two types of synchronous, one being a pipelined um, ZBT, zero bus turnaround SRAM, and another being a standard synchronous SRAM. Um, so I support three boards now, the D, the Terrasic Altera D270, the D2115, and then the Xilinx ML505. Um, so uh, what else do I have here? Um, yeah, oh, so I'm going to add support for the, uh, for the uh, D270 Ethernet interface, because right now I don't have support for that. And um, I really want to have Ethernet support for that board because it's a Cyclone 2 board, 
which is really small FPGA, and I like to make sure that my emulator can fit in that without any issues at all. Now, I don't have support for the D2 Ethernet D270 Ethernet interface because it uses a completely different Ethernet chip. It actually uses a um, a Phi Mac hybrid chip. It's actually the Phi and the Mac in a single chip. Now, on the ML505 and the D2115, they actually use the same chip, um, and it's the Phi only. It's just the the uh, analog to digital conversion. So the Mac itself is all created by me um, inside the FPGA. So um, that's going to need to change. I'm going to need to add support for that, which I definitely want to do. I'll probably do that next, actually. Um, I fixed a bunch of major bugs. I've updated my weblog finally, like like a year later since my last post. Um, what else did I do? Um, I have support for the ARP request. I integrated the HQ, HQ2X pixel scaler. I have other videos that are a way better example, have way better, um, or are way better examples for the HQ2X pixel scaler working. Um, you can see that on my YouTube channel. I also have other blog posts about that. Um, I talked about the cheat, uh, cheat upgrades, um, the additional error checking. So it's it's pretty crazy because the ROM when it's uploaded is, um, it is verified in multiple ways. So you have the Ethernet frame CRC32. You have the IP IP, you know, Internet Protocol, the IP packet checksum. You have the UDP checksum, and then I also like I said before, the QT GUI sends, it calculates its own CRC32 value locally on the PC and then sends that value and asks the Varaness to compare and say, hey, did you get the same CRC that I did? And the Varaness will say, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Um, and another thing is the CPU execution logger. That's another thing that uh, I've upgraded. So I updated that. That no longer uses a the softcore PicoBlaze, the Zionist PicoBlaze processor anymore, because I needed it to work on the Altera, and the PicoBlaze only works for the for the Xilinx. So um, I changed that. I completely got rid of the PicoBlaze softcore processor. It's not really a processor. It's it's almost nothing actually. But um, I, that's now it's in full hardware. You don't. There's no like software thing you have to upload to it for it to work. It's in pure it's pure system Verilog, and it's much faster because of that. And it's also much faster because now I'm running um, over the Ethernet, and it is way faster. So I can show you an example here. So I can run. I can just play Super Mario for a bit now. When it was over the UR, it was so slow. It actually, you could actually see the uh, the frame buffer uh, getting updated line by line. That's how slow it was. Now with the Ethernet is a lot faster. It's playable, but it's kind of like in slow motion. Um, but it's a really incredible tool for debugging. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Um, Actually, let me let me enable my uh, cheat codes real quick. Give myself Starman effect here, um, and close that. So here's a, I'm going to turn the execution logger on, and I'm going to start moving. So I just turned it on, so it's capturing a ton of data right now. Every single instruction cycle of the entire processor. Now I'm actually going to stop it because the logs file is going to be huge. So this file is 22 megabytes, and um, it's it just captured the raw hex data, and then I capture that and parse it and format it on my uh, PC. So let's go ahead and view that log. It's going to take a while because it's 22 megs, but um, we'll just let it go for now um, I think that's about it 
Mm, yeah, I don't think I really had anything else uh, to say. Um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to wait for this to upload because I've already shown uh, what that looks like in my previous videos. But that is it, and the cheat code interface is really one I wanted to demonstrate and just uh, demonstrate that the Ethernet interface is working very well now and um, that I have support for a new board and that I am still working on the Veranus. I know I haven't updated it in like a year, but my, my blog in like a year, but I have been working on the Nintendo over that time period. I just haven't taken the time to update my blog. So I am still actively working on it. And uh, as soon as I tidy up a few loose ends, like getting the ethernet working on the other board, the D270 board, and implementing implementing a few more mappers and fixing a few other bugs i'm gonna go start really working hardcore on my ppu which i've been totally avoiding <laughs> because 99 percent of the games are playable they may have some graphics corruption but it, it's certainly not bad enough that it uh affects you know makes me want to oh man i really gotta fix that because this game isn't even worth playing it's so bad um so I think that's it. Um, yeah, I can't even cancel this. I need to add a feature to cancel that. Um, but I'm going to let you go. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.